let's get this thing on the road, man. Yeah. Um, J Hill, J Hill podcast. I'm here. Uh, so I didn't ask you this off camera because I just wanted to see if I could get your name right or okay. if I was going to slaughter it. Okay, let's hear it because a lot of people slaughter it. Is it Beja? Yeah, that's Beja. Oh, that, okay, that's that's good. First time, most people be like Baja, or like Bahia. Wait, what? Baja. Okay, yeah, I've heard a lot of that. different things. I was gonna say Baja. Yeah, first. I've heard a lot of different things before. Funny enough, though, it actually really like my mom intended for it to be Baja, mm -hmm. but then when I uh, started going to like school, like pre K, like my teachers just called me Beja and. Everybody just, like, I've never known my name to be Baja, so it's, like, I don't know, it's weird. It's, like, she might have meant it like that, but she doesn't even call me that. Like, she calls me Beja. So, wow, we just connected, OD. <laughs> and it's probably going to be the first time I ever had this conversation on camera. Probably never had this conversation again. So, my government name is Jerome. Okay. Right? Okay. But ever since, I, it's funny how, like, the universe works, right? People, the universe, but... So my mom used to always call me J Rome. Uh. Like it's weird. Like, but it's spelled J E R. So so it's like my mom used to always call me J Rome. And then when I went to high school, um, when I played football, they had the first initial and the last name. Mm -hmm. So like on my helmet, so it was always J Hill. So like it was never like it was always J. Oh, Everybody that's like, cool. well, how do you get J out of Jerome? Yeah. But it's just that's what it is. Yeah, see, we connected. Okay. And it's my first time ever sharing my, my government name on camera. Oh, that's weird. Oh, wow. Okay, well, then that's, gonna be that's special. A, that's pretty special. They're going to be killing me in the <laughs> comments now. Like, oh, that's my special. God. But um, how are you? I'm doing good. You know, I'm chilling. Today was a pretty chill day for the most part. Chill Thursday. Congratulations for you because you know. today every, it was everything but chill. Really? Yeah. Oh, so how are you then? I'm good, though. Oh, okay. For sure. No, I'm good. I, like, I'm <laughs> I'm good. Oh, okay. Do you ever feel like you be getting uh like overwhelmed when your day is hectic? Mm, uh, sometimes like if I'm if I'm tired, then yeah. But typically, I like for my days to be kind of busy, not like hectic, but busy. Wait, what's your you sign? You know what I mean? I'm a Leo. Okay, my daughter's a Leo. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, how old is she? She's thirteen. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> so she's like opinionated. I'm sure she has like tons of opinions and thoughts and just. But she has tons of emotions. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, it's kind of like that. But it's so she's my stepdaughter. Okay. Um, I'm I met her when she was eight. Oh. Uh, she's kind of been the same, but like, she's just like extra emotional now. You like, came in at a pivotal time though, because if she's thirteen, then it's like she's like a teenager. Yes. So like she's coming into like puberty and like her emotions are like all on ten. So I'm sure that's like pretty colorful for you guys. Oh my god! <laughs> it's but when I. Even when I first met her, right, like when she was nine, she was going to school. She was crying about her hair, oh. and she still had the same emotions about the same things, like my yeah. hair, my hair, my. Clothes. I get, yeah, I'm, I'm, I get upset about my hair too. Like I'm very particular about my hair, for sure. I like the the, the which which I call them. I call them straight back. I call them like yeah, just like cornrows or just braids. Okay, so <laughs> since we breaking down these barriers, right? Sure. Can I be honest? Sure. I feel so bad. Why? Cause I'm old, and I never, I never really heard about the o OMG girls. No, it's okay. It, you know what? Funny enough, a lot of people. I think now it's kind of crazy because a lot of the people who were fans of us, they're now grown. They're like our age, right. and then you have like a whole younger group of kids who might know a little bit, but they really don't know because it wasn't like their era. Mm -hmm. You know, like twenty. I, I would say like. We were probably well. It was like 2009, right? Yeah, no? like 2009. We we broke up in like 2014. So you know, like that whole little era, I guess. Like it's so funny because I've been seeing people like romanticizing, like being a teenager in mm. 2014 or like 2013. I'm like, I didn't think I was like that old enough to like see something like that happen. But like legit, they're like, oh my gosh, what what, what I wouldn't give to be a teenager in 2014. I'm like. Really? Like, that makes me feel old now. But you're super young. I feel like, well, you're not supposed to ask a girl. Like no, 25? I mean, I'm, I'm 26. 26. I just turned 26 in August, August the 2nd. Congratulations. Happy belated birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, okay. But, um, I mean, you know, I've been. I know a little something. See? Yeah, like, I mean, I've been singing. That was my first professional start. I sang all my life. But, like, that was the first professional group that I was in. I was 12 when I got in the group. And. You know, we did it all the way up until I was 18 is when we broke up. So, like, 
you know, it's just, it's been a real interesting journey for sure. Mm, and you can sing though. Thank you. Like, is that hard being in a group? Like, cause you know, usually groups, I, I and I might be wrong for this, but y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I haven't really heard s the newer age groups yeah. that like had like really like blower, like singers. It's yeah. always like harmonizing and make great songs, but it wasn't really like, singing like back and they like sang yeah right like uh like a destiny's child type vibe yeah, i mean even like uh yeah yeah i was about to say destiny's child <laughs> See, that's how I, it went over my head i was just about to say destiny's child but yeah it's just like destiny's child yeah um usually you just hear it like they, they would uh harmonize and they would um dance and things like that yeah but like you can really sing thank you was that hard um, being the could well let me ask because i don't know well i don't think it was necessarily like hard because i think what was so unique about our group at that time was like all of us had something that like the other one lacked so like i really could sing but i i wasn't like the best dancer and okay. so the other two girls could really really dance and then like you know on certain songs depending on what it is like you don't really need like a super duper like powerful vocal you know right. you might need like a light and airy moment and that's kind of like difficult for me vocally so like neek will always like you know come in clutch right there like so i think we just balance each other out you know like it was never like like we kind of just fit together really well it was never like a like a difficult thing for us so the girls cause i i want to assume because i did read some things <laughs> but again it was so like i said it was so hectic right i yeah. don't make the excuse but I don't want to slaughter it, but I, I I might take a stab at it. I'm okay. Sure. Yeah. When you say Neek, was it Zonique? Zonique. Zonique. Yeah. That's um, uh, Tia's daughter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I know her because one of my friends from back home was dating her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Okay. Was it? They gonna kill me if I get. Was it Regine? Regine. Regine Carter. Yeah. That was her. No, was, no, no, no. So. Right. Well, Regine was in the group, yes. Like, so, right, so it was. I'm, I'm on point. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> so originally it was four of us. It was me, Zani, Regine, and my little sister, Lourdes. Okay. And then when we kind of we were doing our thing for a minute, then the two of them left the group, and then we put in Brianna. And then that's when we like got our deal with Interscope, and like when you see the whole Gucci this, Gucci that, where the boys at. Like that was kind of the start of that. Wow, I actually seen that video. <laughs> Ti was in that video and like Little King was in it, uh, yeah. Damani, right? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, damn, that's so. so Time flies. It does. It does. But I don't ask. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't. I never remembered that video. Yeah, like I mean, I feel like because I'm you're older. older but yeah, yeah in 2010, like 2000, I wasn't. That's what I'm. To, that's what I'm saying. Like you know, for a lot, and then too, we were really primarily for like young girls. Right. Like you know, our demographic was young girls. Yeah, and I think I was like 18 in 2000. So it's kind of like it's so like funny because like well my my bro right here my engineer this is we right this is my engineer like everything my best friend what's his name Kyron Kyron, Kyron. Just let that get on camera so you know it's like um it's so it's funny because damn I for, I forgot where I was going with that. Your bro, your engineer. Yeah. Okay. So basically, what was he talking about before that? We was talking about I never in 2010. I wasn't really. Oh right. It. So when I first met my bro, like he's like, you know, I knew about the group, but I ain't never really listened to y'all mm. because he was also like, he's he's only a few years older than me, but he's also a, a he's closer to my age. Bro. Yeah, he's okay. a man though. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't really geared towards men and young boys mm -hmm. so you know I, that's not uncommon damn that's crazy so how did i'm pretty sure you probably had this question a thousand times yeah how did y'all break up well i think for me <clears throat> i think a lot of different things were happening at once but really just to kind of save the dramatics of it i really just honestly think all of us wanted to do different things and i think we had been together you know you're together from 12 to 18 and then you're 18 and this is like okay like i'm legally grown but you also feel grown and i think all of us wanted to try something different mm. so i think at that point it made sense but i think the cool thing about our friendship is that we've never um you know how you hear about girl groups and it's like oh like they broke up it was dramatic like they're not cool no groups more groups in general nowadays. you know it's like that was never our thing like anything that we've ever gone through if we have because i'm not saying we're perfect we've disagreed we've argued all of that but it's never ever hit like a public blog or like a web you know like mm -hmm. a instagram type of thing like we 
really deal with things like with each other and i just feel like the fact that we're still able to be friends like we still get together we hang out like just on a regular just oh, off Lord. of you know what i mean anything else off of the industry um and plus me and zanique have been best friends since we were born like our moms have been best friends since they were 10 and as by way of that we're best friends you know so it's like it's family almost do you think that um do, did you have a or just ask straight up do you think it was forced at all the um, group thing to have y'all sing no i i actually don't funny enough when all of it got started we were well at the time my, my auntie tamika was filming tiny and toya mm -hmm. and so she had called my mom and she's like you know i want to do this group for the show it was just got, like gonna be like an episode for the show i believe mm. she's like i want to do this group for the show bring beige bring lordy so my mom's like all right cool she brings us over and you know we filmed the episode everything's fine it's like we're living a regular life when it came on tv like we literally started getting like bookings like everybody was going crazy like who are these girls like we want to see them you know wow. and so that's when my aunt was like oh this gotta be a real thing because like kids really like them for real you know like at first it was just gonna be like a tv type thing and once everybody saw the potential of it that's when we was like oh yeah it gotta be serious and from there it like popped off almost like a whole just like era of mm. music like it's it's kind of crazy because i feel like when people look back at that it's like we never had an album or anything like that but just when we talk about like the culture and just like i guess i don't want to say pop culture because we weren't really pop but like when you just think about being a teenager during that time like you cannot not bring up mom's behavior or omg mm -hmm. girls or jacob Lattimore, you know like diggy um you know just people like that and now all of us are like grown and everybody's like doing their respective things it's kind of cool bro that's crazy that you even bring bring that up because i probably wouldn't even mention jacob Lattimore, but yeah. i've interviewed him being jacob in, used to be on the road with us though i didn't I've interviewed him being yeah. in this space <laughs> and he's another one that's super talented. Yeah. Like, well, for people that don't know, Jacob Lattimore, I hope we're talking about the same one. He yeah. plays on the shower, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the uh, yep. the light skinned guy. Who, what, what character is it? He's Emmett. He has all the Emmett. Emmett. Exactly. Is his yeah, yeah. He's really talented. No, he's he's always been super talented. Um, I've known Jacob since I was like 11 12 cool. wow. and you know he always sang and then like i think he was probably the first one out of all of us to get his deal mm. and then they revamped scream tour and our manager at the time he was the one who did the scream tour wow. so we were on scream tour as an opening act like Damn. we opened up the show before jacob for milence everybody and what ended up happening was is as the scream tours progressed on because we did a scream tour then we did like a holiday run and then we came back and did like a new year thing so they were constantly just doing it we kind of just worked our way up in mm. the lineup like you know and then it came to us being like on right before mindless which was the headliner at that time what was what would you say the difference between the scream tour and then the millennial tour um you, just from what looking at it from outside of i don't really think it's that much of a difference i think like you what i really feel like the similarity in it is just like people wanting to feel like teenagers again or young again okay you know like i've noticed a lot of people associate us with their like childhood or their teenage years and they're like yo like you really shaped my childhood in a sense or like you know you gave me the confidence and, like do my hair crazy colors and you know shit like that so i feel like it's not really much of a difference you know when people are going to the millennium tour it's like oh like i remember these songs i remember these artists i remember going to the scream tour and yeah no nah, for them. sure for sure you know so now i want to go to the millennium tour so that's pretty much I, I don't really think it's like a a difference i feel like if we were to do like a tour it would kind of be like very similar yeah no nah, it's crazy i actually wanted to talk on one of the points you just uh you just brought up and that was the the cultivation of yeah. girls when this these colorful hair yeah. colorful hair yeah right um you you were what age you was 12 when you started or i was 12 when i started in the group yeah okay and when y'all started doing the hair, was it instantly doing the colorful hair or was it so years after? we started out with colored pieces and the inspiration really behind that was like the whole like Harajuku girls like over in Tokyo. And then like Nikki was coming up at the time, but she had like the one pink piece in the back. And I remember our first show, I'm like, yo, we need to do like colored hair. We need to get some pieces. We got the pieces. Everybody kind of went crazy. And then right 
either before or right when we got our deal. I really want to say it was like a little bit after we signed to Interscope. That's when we was like, all right, we're going to dye our hair like all pink, all blue, all purple. And that shit just kind of went crazy. Like, yeah. we, I don't really think, like, I remember on the internet, everybody was like, oh my God, they're so ghetto. Yeah, I was, how, yep, how I was is going their there. parents letting them do this? Their hair is going to fall out. Like, it was just so much. Typically, from like, you know, like, I would say, like, women who look like us. Of color, yeah, not yeah, for sure. But you know, I go think, there, let's go there. I think, too, like, it was just something that people had never seen before. And I think that we kind of gave, like, young girls and really women, period, young women, period, the confidence. Cause it's not like we're the first to wear colored hair. I just think that in this era, we were the first girls to give like other black women that confidence. You know what I mean? Like I, I me personally, I feel like really the best time to wear colored hair like that is when you're young. Like who really gives a fuck if I'm like 15 walking around pink hair? You know what I mean? Like I'm a child. Mm -hmm. But I guess for like the older women who were commenting on it at that time, I don't think they really understood it. And now we've seen this kind of resurgence of like women doing like Pink, blue, purple, red, green, neon, gray, like all these different colors. Burgundy for and it's sure. Like, red, yeah, red is big. Red yeah. is big. Yeah. Like, I mean, and I, but I love to see it though. Cause I feel like it's, it's expressing yourself. You know what I mean? Like, we could wear colored hair too. You know, I feel like for so long, black women, we've been put in this box. Oh, we got to wear our hair like this. We got to look like this. Your hair can't be too curly or kinky or anything like that. And I just feel like, as black women, we could do what the fuck we want to do. Like, and and that's why I, I I wanted to have that conversation yeah. because I feel like that's definitely a conversation we see in our culture, mm -hmm. right? And like you said, you guys seen it from some girls in Tokyo, yeah, right. And and well, I don't know we're not in that culture, but we don't see uh, girls with fair skin or white girls or um, girls who aren't of color, yeah, get the same sl uh, slack that black women get when they wear absolutely wigs. not, and especially young 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 like white girls um you know so i think when we came and we did that it was kind of like almost like a culture shock you mm. know like i remember if shade room wasn't around yet it was like media takeout was like the big blog and on media takeout they like crucified us Ugh, i was devastated i'm like oh my gosh i hate this people have all this stuff to say but really then i just stopped caring because i like you know at the time my mom was like girl fuck that this shit is hot like this shit is cute so once my mama like vetted it and was like oh this is cute that's when you know i really was like all right fuck it like i'm gonna just sit in that and this is what it is like and that's so that's so powerful, right? You had your moms there to support it. Yeah. Imagine if you didn't have that support, yeah. like how you would feel in that in that moment. Yeah, no, for sure. I, it would have been probably tough. like thirteen at this point, maybe like thirteen, fourteen. I was it? like a fresh fourteen. That's crazy. A fresh fourteen. So it was just it was just crazy. It was just a crazy um experience. But I think that whole thing really set me up just to kinda like have tough skin period. And, and walk and, in your confidence. Yeah, and really to just like take criticism differently mm. too. Um, you know, I think when you're young, a lot of people feel like, you know, you see young artists and they doing their thing and you kinda don't really see like the development. Right now I feel like artists aren't being developed anymore. They're just kinda being like put out. Like I think the label is they want you to come the internet. With everything. They want you to come with everything. So it's easier for them to do their job, which is fine. But like it's no development going on. See like when we we had to do artist development. So like literally I've pretty much heard everything that you could possibly hear and I heard it from a young age. So now I like you, criticism for me it doesn't bother me like I just I just eat it up really like I'm just like all right whatever like what happened to artist development because I remember at one point people were raving on it so uh so much yeah because of uh I think the the one person who really was big on it was um Matthew mm -hmm. knows mm -hmm. uh Beyonce pops right for sure I think he he put her through artist development so much. He put um he had some other artists that he yeah put a lot of artists did artist. We actually the guy who did artist development for us actually developed New Edition. He mm. did artist development for them as well. Um, his name is Marvin, um, and he they took us to uh, to him. My my auntie Tamika took us to him. She was like, y'all gotta go to him. We was there for probably like a month, mm. every weekend, every day of the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, we was there and literally like you really just get broken down and be built back up. Honestly, it's like you kind of forget everything you thought it was. And they actually show you like mic placement, media training, how to be on stage, how to perform on a big stage, how to perform on the stage the size of this room. 
um you know and it was just like that that's to me that's like the shit money can't buy really. exactly you know what i'm saying like the tools that i got from being in the group really like is shit that i still carry with me in my solo career right now that's you hard. know what i mean as an adult so you know the whole experience for me i really felt like was um positive because i learned so much even the stuff that i felt at the time maybe was negative like certain situations or whatever it was still like a positive because i learned from it you know what i mean mm -hmm. so now i don't really run into a whole bunch of problems you know it's crazy because it's always like pros and cons of everything yeah. right, of life but the one thing that, that that just stood out to me when you was talking about um artist development was being media trained yeah i feel like the one thing that money can't buy though is authenticity yeah and sometimes you get real moments from mistakes yeah like sometimes you get on the camera to talk and sometimes you might say something that you mean but it might not have came out how you would have wanted it yeah. to come out and now it blows up but guess what from that you get so many people who say damn I feel less the same way. Yeah. I think really, though, the cool thing with media training is that it's not really like they're telling you, OK, be somebody you're not. Right. Mm. It's just like be strategic with what you're saying, even if you want to, like, create a moment or you want to create like a, like even now, like how every time you talk, like I, I don't look anywhere else but you like mm. that's just been embedded in my brain because I'm literally with two other girls all the time before it was three other girls and you know when y'all talking over each other and one looking here one looking there it's kind of like distracting so it's just certain like things I would say I don't really think that they ever taught us to not be who we are but it's just like be strategic like I have like interviews on the internet where like I it was early in the morning like four or five o'clock in the morning I'm falling asleep in the middle of the interview mm. like me and the girls had got into it or about so I can't remember what the hell it was but basically I was mad so I'm like the whole interview I'm just not gonna talk I'm gonna just look mad and not talk you know and it's like once we got it to media training it's like that's not okay though and this is why you know so I think that it's not really like a be someone you're not mm. i think it just kind of better helps you navigate the media because right. they take whatever you say and kind of flip it run with it nah, you know facts. interpret it so. and not even like when i say not, not not be someone you're not but i just feel like when when i hear media train right when i talk to somebody it's like i can never get a real answer and not saying that they're being fake it's just like you said sometimes it's they're being strategic but sometimes that can take away from a moment because we're talking i'm saying yo how do you feel about I don't know hypothetically gay culture or how do you feel about uh abortions and they be like yeah you know i just you know i mean it's just i just feel like everybody should yeah listen. and i'd be like bro how do you feel yeah like, no, i just feel like everybody should but see it's tough life. it's tough because i feel like right now we kind of in a society where i don't want to say you're not allowed to have your own opinion but if it's not the opinion that everyone else has, then it's kind of like viewed negatively. And you see people lose their whole careers in life behind not saying the correct thing. So it's like for artists, I think it's not even like, I think more a lot of artists are really scared to say how they feel. I don't think it's like they're trying to be political with it, but it's like, shit, I don't want to say the wrong shit because if I say the wrong thing, I could literally lose everything overnight just like that, like quickly. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, I feel like if you an established artist and you have like That's accolades, true. you, you're where you want to be, then you have kind of like the freedom to speak how you want to speak. But when you kind of like still trying to establish yourself, like you're not really in a position to not agree with whatever you should agree with. That's you see true. what I'm saying? I was listening to a, um, a few uh, radio personalities yeah. and they be saying like, that's why they don't like talking to, because what you said just made a lot of sense. Sometimes they don't like interviewing up and coming artists because like that. It's yeah. like, they're not going to talk to you just candid yeah. because it's like, bro, they got too much to lose. But and nowadays I feel like with the internet, bro, like you could be you. And, because it's a, and this is the good and the bad thing about the internet. Yeah. And this is what I tell people all the time. The good, the good and bad thing about the internet is it exposes you to do, do, do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But the bad thing is it's an audience for every single thing. And although yeah. that could be a good thing, but imagine somebody who's just a foul person yeah. who's promoting neck like a rapist, right? Yeah. It's somebody out there who thinks just like them. So because sure. they have the internet, it's somebody that's gonna agree with them and now we have this negativity shit spread it. So yeah. it's a good and bad thing with it. So I Yeah, it sure. I mean I, I I could I could agree with that standpoint. Mm -hmm. I could agree with that. No. I just try to be, for me personally, I try not to speak too 
po- politically. You know I like what that. I mean? Like, I, like I think. Don't give me no. Yeah, like, I you like know that. what I'm saying? Like, it's just, I feel like certain things, you know, unless you're really ready to, like, take it there, certain things just really, you know, like, what, what I feel about, you know, abortions or whatever is going on politically, like, it really, honestly, like, what is my opinion to what's going on in the rest of the world like i kind of get it from a standpoint of people wanting artists to like use their platform to speak on things that are not going on so i definitely feel like it's some responsibility in that but i also feel like it's almost like when people kind of put you up to be a role model even though you didn't ask it's like being a role model kind of comes with this but Mm. a lot of people ain't trying to raise nobody else's kids facts that's (laughs) that's a fact you know so it's just you know that's kind of like it's like you have to balance it you have to balance it out. So, how do you feel about abortions? I mean, <laughs> so I, <can't> <laughs> with you. I mean, me personally. I'm joking. You might not. Oh, okay. Really okay. It's okay. Fine. It's yeah, fine. I'm, I'm fine. not gonna. Answer yeah, yeah. It. <laughs> <laughs> it was a joke. So, um, I mean, unless you want to, it's fine. I mean, if you want to. I but. mean, I just feel like you know, pers- I just think everybody should just do what they want to do. Mm. You know, like that's kind of like where I'm at with it. I don't really think it's my place or my position to tell anybody you know what they should do you know at any moment i'm not in anybody's situation so i can't really um speak to what you know what's going on in in the decisions that or you know the thought process that's made like i've never had an abortion so i don't have kids but Mm -hmm. you know i don't know like you know what i'm saying like what that thought process is and you know some people truly you know don't be ready like i don't believe in bringing kids in this world and you're not ready to really like raise them it was a tweet i think or a video or something that thug had made and he was just like, y'all broke niggas need to stop having kids. Mm. And, you know, no, but that's real shit, though. <laughs> no, it because is. Because it's real. like, you know, it's it's tough to raise a kid. And, and speaking from my perspective, you know, I, m- my biological father is not in my life. I mm. was raised by my sister's father, who's the only father I've ever known. He's my mother's husband. And, you know, it's like that's the only dad I've ever known. He came into my life when I was five months old. Shout out to the real men to yeah, be like, up. But, see, I just feel like, you know, it's it's kind of like coming from you know you have like a parent and my dad is known he's he's in the industry as well and it's like you know you have a parent he was in silk oh wow so you have a parent who when i kind of enter into the industry people are like oh that you know that that's his daughter like you know what i mean and it's kind of like weird because i would be at sessions and like niggas would be like oh like i know your dad and da 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 I'm like, I don't know that nigga like that, mm. though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really don't. Like, and I don't have no hard feelings towards him. It is what it is. Like, me and him done chopped it up and everything. But, you know, it's like. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah, so, not your stepdad. My biological your father. Your biological father. Yeah. Was in Silk. Yes. Nah, hold up. <laughs> I'm sorry. We always get deep on this shit. I wasn't even yeah. expecting this. Wait. How in the. You gotta break that because that me personally from an outside looking in, yeah. that makes no sense. How can you be so popular and so lit? But I mean, it's just like I guess that's how the industry is. You know, like he came up in a time in the industry where like shit was not geared towards like artist preservation. You know, like artists didn't really have rights or say so to anything. And so I think, you know, with his situation, you know, it was it's like we come back to back. Like literally, like I have two older, bro- like two brothers that's older than me. It's like eight of us total, and we come like a year, two years apart each. So it, it's kind of like I, I feel that he, I don't know, I don't really know like what his thing is with that. You know, I've never really been able to get a clear answer. Like, why the fuck can't you just stop having kids? You know what I mean? Like, well, I've never even, gotten an answer on that. He, he, wait, he was in your life or? No. Right, so it's not even about stop having kids. It's not about that, really. It's about why wasn't you here for me? I think that, I don't know. I think it's tough, like, as a man, I guess, like, to to kind of see another man. And see, like, to me, when I was younger, I didn't really, like, I didn't really understand it for real. Like, it was like, okay, I would go and see my dad, but, like, this is my dad, though. Like, the dad that I go home to is my dad. Mm. You know, like, that's, like, my daddy. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything important that I've ever had, he's always there. He never misses anything. All my shows, first steps I took, he was waiting for me on the other side to catch me. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, 
growing up I knew but I just think that really it got out of hand I think that he just kind of was having like a lot of us back to back to back and I think like it just got fucking out of hand you know Mm. what I mean like eight really five young kids back to back to back and then you come back and you have like more kids after you know what I'm saying like I just think it kind of got out of hand you're so (laughs) so understanding in it of this um I mean I think that kind of came with time right Mm. like I think growing up it used to frustrate me because I feel like I would hear people talk about this version of him that I never met Mm. and I would kind of feel like people knew more good things about him than I really did so it kind of as a teenager and even as a young girl would kind of bother me but now as an adult I think I'm content with the fact that he just is who he is and I can't change that change that I can't change the past I can't change like what happened I can't change the decisions that he made but as it stands now like for me personally like the reason I don't even talk about or bring it up is because I really feel like it's disrespectful to to my father who raised me you know what I mean like I like yeah like I I feel like it's almost like you know like he really did something that he didn't have to do I tell him that every father's day I'm like you didn't have to do that but you did he's always like "I, I had to you know, like, it wasn't he, a choice. yeah, like he's just always like from the moment that I saw you, like I loved you, you know, and I really wanted to like um, be a part of your life and mm. I want to be a part of your mom's life. And that's just what it was like, you know, I ain't never known anything different, you know, so I think and then I think to me actually having a father figure, it kind of totally I didn't even give a fuck. Really. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like it would it would bother me certain times when I'm in sessions or like niggas is talking to me about like my pops or whatever. But, you know, for the most part, it didn't bother me because I'm just like it. I can't I, you know, I can't be upset about the decisions that he chose to make. And I feel like now I'm, I'm a grown woman. I'm 26. Like I, it ain't really too much more raising. You know what I'm saying? That I really need for real, for real. anything I ever need. I just I call my daddy like, you know, who raised me. That's amazing yeah like that like that is amazing and it's so um it's a colorful story <laughs> yeah and it's relatable though yeah. because you know i lost my my same thing oh i'm sorry so my, my pops uh wasn't there my biological father wasn't there um i feel like he wanted to be but i yeah. don't know life took i don't know i have yeah. no idea but i remember him passing and it's the the feeling was so weird because i was hurt and yeah. i felt like i was hurt for the wrong thing yeah I was hurt because I wasn't hurt, if that makes sense. Mm. So, like, when he passed, I didn't feel anything. And at one one time, I was just sitting sitting in the room and it's like, yo, I lost my father. Yeah. I should be hurt. Like, I I wish I would have known. I, I want to be hurt about this. Yeah. I want I, I want to have memories of this so I don't have memories. So now I'm upset and I'm frustrated about what could have been. Yeah. And and I could I could see that, you know, he's still living and, you know, I don't wish anything bad on him, you know, mm-hmm. but it's almost like I don't feel that emotional connection. And then I just realized that's not my fault. Right. Mm. Like I'm at the end of the day, I'm the kid in it and I'm like innocent in all of that, you know, and like you were innocent in all of that, too. Like, I don't think. I think, you know, I'm a person who, like, I just be like, feel how you feel, right? Mm-hmm. Like, if that's how you felt, you should feel that way. But it's not really, like, your fault. You mm-hmm. feel me? That, like, a bond really wasn't there. Like, I, and me personally, like, I feel like where where we at with it is, like, like I he don't want to try, I don't want to try. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I just feel like we both are, like, it's cool. You know, like, we don't have to do it. Like, we, we know that we related. We know all of that. But it's not really any type of effort. And I'm okay with that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not upset, you know, or, like, hurt by that. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So it's just kind of um, a tricky space to navigate. But I try to speak openly about it because I feel like, you know, a lot of people don't really know about that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, I feel like it kind of helps certain people, too. Like, when you talk to somebody, it's like, oh, I can relate. You For know sure. what I mean? 100%. Like, I definitely can relate, you know what I mean, to that struggle. So... It just, um, it's just kind of something that you kind of got to just take your time with, I guess, and really like just figure out how you should, how you should navigate it, mm. you know, like not just, um, you know, him, but yourself, you know what I mean? Like allow yourself space to just feel how you feel. I'm glad you were even open to having that conversation. Oh yeah. Cause... Like, no, it's not no, you know, it ain't no problem. Like, see, cause it's not a secret, you mm. know, like it's like people, if you know, you know. It's not anything I broadcast, but like if you know, you know. Damn. And um, 
you know, again, like I said, like I was, you know, my, my daddy was in my life. He was there for me. Like, you know, he raised me and I just, that's what it is. You know what I mean? Like that's my dad for sure. Like it's, it's funny cause my brothers would come to my house sometimes, you know, like, and they would come and kick it with us. You know, my dad, he never cared. Like, yeah. you know, he always was just like, whatever. Like, you know, if you want, if, if you want your brothers to be around you, cool. Like if you want to, you know, try to have a relationship with your biological dad, fine. I don't have nothing to do with me, you know, but um, he's very it, protective of it, me. It, you know, it's crazy though. It's crazy because I'm I'm in a situation and and I feel like as as a man you do care yeah but I know that this don't have nothing to do with me yeah and and as a person you should have a relationship with with your biological father if you want it yeah right so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do anything to hinder that absolutely but it does hurt because you know I'm just being honest right yeah and I never had this conversation on camera but sometimes it's like sometimes. It's jealousy. Sometimes it's like they. Sometimes it's like you feel they they are less deserving. It's like yeah. bro, I've been here. Yeah. So the fact that you can come when you want is is frustrating. Yeah. Because it's like it's like. See, my dad was very much like my dad was very much like you're not gonna be in and out. So either you gonna be in her life and you are gonna be consistently in her life, mm. or you are not gonna be a part of it at all. And he made that known. Mm-hmm. He he made that known to him, but he was like, I what hope- you're not gonna do. I think how I old was your be... pops? You know what I'm saying? Like how old? Like was he a little older? Um, my father who right? Yeah, my dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, he <clears> was <throat> he was older. He was old, but not that much older. Like I mean, when he came into my life, he had to be in his like late twenties, early thirties. I'm guessing. Okay, so he was I at mean, least forty when he was making these decisions. Like you either going to or be there. not? Maybe like um, he had to be probably like, yeah in his thirties, but. Okay. You know, I think that, see, my dad already had kids, too. He already okay. had three, my okay. three other siblings before, okay. you know what I'm saying? So I think for him, it was just like, he didn't want me to be in a situation where I'm getting my hopes up to see my dad and he don't come through. And so his thing was like, it's not going to be that. It's either you're going to be here and you're going to be a part of this family and be a part of her life, or you're just not going to do it at all. But you're not going to pick and choose when you come around and then upset her when you don't. Because then that, now we have to, in yeah, our household, right. you know what I'm saying? We got to clean that up and make sure that she's okay. And it's it's detrimental. Like, you know what I mean? So I think once that conversation was had, I think that things definitely kind of changed. I think he chose to not be there. That's so fire. And that was that. And him having to be able to have that conversation because I'm not going to lie. I be feeling like that, but I sometimes I feel like it's not my place to say anything. Well, see, the thing <clears> about <throat> it is, it's like, if you're raising her, then I feel like it's different. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, my father was there every step of the way. Like, in, in every way that a dad can be a dad to a child, like, he was there. So, mm. I think he definitely took it personally. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And he felt that I didn't deserve to be confused or to, you know, well, why does not my dad want You know, like, I didn't deserve that, he felt. And, um, you know... He was just like, nah, like it's either going to be this or that, but it ain't going to be, you know what I'm saying? It ain't going to be all of this. That's hard. It's not going to be all of this. That's so fire. So yeah. how, did when you did have those moments of thinking about it, did that affect your music in any way? Like um, at all? I think. In your solo career, I guess. Yeah. Like I think t- maybe when I speak about like breakups and heartbreak and things like that, like really actually kind of like knowing like okay like this is you know like my family but for lack of a better term it don't really seem like bro really wants shit to do with me you Mm. know what I mean and um it just I think when I talk about like breakups heartbreaks and stuff like that yeah but not really necessarily because I didn't miss anything Mm. you see what I'm saying so I don't have like a longing for a relationship with my dad or like a longing for like him to be a part of my life because I I have that now Mm. so I'm just kind of like indifferent to it I guess you know what I mean like it doesn't really it doesn't really bother me man that's fire I um I actually wanted to uh before we got into that conversation I wanted to uh going back into the the colorful hair right just curious because I can I feel like part of me feel like I can see why people be upset but part of me not and like you said it's better to have it when you're young. Yeah. Right? But let's say 
women want to get colorful hair, mm -hmm. right? And I don't know, um, just freedom of expression of yeah. your body in general. Yeah. <clears throat> but when it comes to trying to get a job or be in a professional space, how do you differentiate or how do you, uh, I don't know, par parent that um, in a child's life? I think like, who says that like color hair is not professional though? Mm -hmm. Them, you know what I mean? Like, no. Like I think we should just be allowed to be who we want to be. Cause like I remember being young and being in school and like people's able to come to school with wet hair, you know, and like it's cold as fuck outside and that shit stinks in my opinion. But like it was acceptable. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like I, I who said that that's not acceptable? Because if we see someone who's not my color. You know what I mean? And she might have a blue streak or a pink streak or whatever's in her hair. Like, it's not deemed unprofessional mm. until it's seen on a black woman Damn. or until it's seen on a black person. And, you know, for me, like, I'm not really too, like, you know, like, oh, like, white, black, you know, whatever. But I do feel like in certain instances like that, like, I've been into several meetings. I done sat at Jimmy Iovine house with my hair all pink mm. and got a record deal. You know what I mean? So, but I feel like that's different from corporate, though. Like, but I feel like it's still <clears throat> low key. It's still corporate because in this industry, we're told that we have to look polished. We can't come out the house looking any type of way. We have to always be on point. I think what we did was just different, and I don't really feel like it's anybody's responsibility to deem it professional or not. Like, I feel like being unprofessional, in my opinion, is like showing up and not doing what you're supposed to be doing or half assing your job. Mm. Like if I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing at my job, does it matter what color my hair is? Mm. Or does it matter how my hair looks? And those are kind of like, you know, questions that I've just always wondered. You know what I mean? Like I've been in corporate spaces. I've sat down and you know what I mean? Corporate meetings. And I just feel like, you know, it's acceptable because y'all see like potential here and money here and y'all see an avenue to eat, right? But it's not acceptable if I'm just a regular black girl working a nine to five, if I come in here with a head full of pink hair, it's good. you know what I mean? I don't think that's fair. So <clears throat> that's a great stance. How do we protect our children, but let them let them be themselves? And because let's let's say <clears throat> might be an extreme yeah. example, but we should be able to ask a police officer um, whatever questions we want, right? right? We should be able to 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 give our opinions to police officers. But when when you're raising a black child specifically, yeah. you're going to tell a black I'm gonna tell my son. Yeah, it's important to make it home. Yeah, let's make it home and then let's deal that's with it. That's always right? my motto. So that's how I protect my child. But in in the same instances, right? When you're raising your child and you know that we black people are looked at and we're prejudicated. Is that I don't know if that's the word. Prejudicated. We're we're, we're pre pre yeah, I don't know. prejudiced. Maybe. Yeah, people are. Pre <laughs> I, I get what you're world, saying. Right? Yeah, I get what you're saying. And we are discriminated. <laughs> A better word is we are discriminated against, Facts. right, for just being who we are. Yeah. So when we add something to it, it can be harder if we're trying to go into a corporate space. How do we, how do we differentiate being parents and 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 allowing our children to be safe, but also protecting our children from the world as well? Um, <clears throat> I think really all parents we should just raise children and be like tolerant, you know, and then we we create a world where you don't have to worry about being persecuted or mm. discriminated against because of who you are how you look right i think that's kind of been the whole narrative because here's my thing like i feel like racism oppression things like that is gonna always exist because that stuff is taught not mm. learned you know what i mean like it's taught to you um so as long as you're teaching a child that like you have to be within these bounds or you can't you know what i mean then that's what it is but if you teach your child like look it's people who look like this it's people who like stuff like this it's people who wear their hair like this or got tattoos or you know whatever like then you open your child up to it so mm. when they encounter it it's not unfamiliar to them see ignorance is bliss for sure and when you're <clears throat> ignorant to something a lot of times when we don't know about something the typical human emotion is for us to be Rejected. scared of it. Yep, for sure. And fear it. Yep. You know, I don't know what that is. It could be, it's a high possibility that could be dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's kind of like, and see, I'm not a, I'm not a parent. I don't have a kid, but I just honestly feel like kids should really just be allowed to be themselves. Mm. You know, like I think that's the best thing that you could do for your child. That's the best thing my mama ever did for me mm. was let me be exactly who I am. And, and protect me where I needed protection. That's hard. See, it's, it's one thing to 
protect your child from something that hasn't even like happened yet right like i think my mom she would protect me from you know like the the things that you know children should be protected from of course but i think just in terms of my development like i was always encouraged to sing i was always encouraged to dance or do whatever it was i wanted to do you know so it was never like okay well you can't you know what i mean you can't do that when i wanted to put color in my hair when i was like oh i should do a pink piece my mama went and got it Mm. when i wanted a belly ring my mom took me to get it pierced did she give you an age limit though um well i got my belly button pierced when i was 14 okay 14 or 15 okay and she went with me see because the way my mom is is very much like i want i if you want to do something i'm gonna do it like I'll take you to do it and make sure that I'd you're safe. You, yeah. yeah, I don't want you to go I'd nowhere with, me. with people that you don't know and you get hurt or you know what I mean. Like you trying to sneak around and do something. So me and my mom, our communication has always been like very open line, and so I've never felt like the need to hide anything from her. But I just think that she allowed me to kind of like just be free. Nah, that's and, dope. You know, once that happened, now as an adult, like you know, I live my life freely, like to the freest extent <laughs> you know what i mean yo being surrounded by so much fame you you had fame at a young age yeah. you lit you got your grandma's popping and you popping right now yeah. still popping to this day yo how was like dating for you um dating is interesting it right gotta be. um yeah it, it definitely was because like in my younger years of course like you're on this tour with all of these guys like you know what i mean and we're all like high school age so we're literally like talking to our peers at this point but I think like I I was pulled out of school my 10th grade year the beginning of my 10th grade year to go on tour I never went back I graduated homeschool program all of that so for me I kind of always lean towards like dating people within the industry mm. and funny enough you know like I feel like with my I've never really had a, a serious serious relationship up until like I guess now, but it's like weird. You know what I mean? Because it's like he does music too. Uh, he's not an artist, he's a producer. Okay. And <clears throat> I think that this is the first time that I've ever been involved with anybody. Because it's kind of like a, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't call him my boyfriend, but it's like he's been my boyfriend. But it's it's like weird. You know, I think this is the first time that I have ever been with anybody who's had just as much going on if not more than me wait who is it is it public or because i mean well yeah because i'm curious now who is because <laughs> like, i know i i know oh my god summer walker was doing the uh london on the track thing yeah so. see me and him we have been together for we've been rocking for a minute so he's like a popular producer but um, i know who he is i mean he's produced some really really big records right, just, just say who it is I, it's like, I don't it. know. I don't just know. I don't now. know. You said it's public. Just say it. Now. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's like my partner. That's you know dog. what I'm saying? Like that's that's my dog. Like we, you know, me and him are like this. Um, but it's just weird, I guess, trying to like navigate that space and being like an artist, and then it's like you know he's a producer and kind of like navigating, you know, that relationship and also like being a part of the industry. Like it's just I don't know. It's, so it's if you, I mean, crazy. of course y'all doing y'all thing. Yeah. Um, I guess in another world, if you had <laughs> to do it again, would you go the industry route or would you go a separate route? I, I'm not gonna lie, I probably would still go the industry route. That's um, interesting. Cause I, cause I feel like it's more of an understanding there. Like True. when I did date a guy who wasn't in the industry, I'll never forget it. He had dropped me off to Kyron's house actually. And I had a session at Kyron's house. He probably was tripping. And before I had went <laughs> he in, he yeah. was tripping. Like, who yeah. I know he like you. He before I had went in there, he's like, <sighs> you know, are you fucking this nigga? Like, and I was just so taken back because no one has ever asked me that. And I'm like, yo, like this one, I don't have to answer that. But most importantly, this is my brother. Like, I ain't never been, this nigga's never tried me. We've never been in a space ever from the time that we met where we even liked each other. Like, this ain't no, like, oh, we used to kind of, like, talk and see if we liked each other. Now we don't, we brother. Like, nah, this is my legit brother. And what I really told him is, like, see, what'll happen is you keep questioning me about him, your ass is going to be out the picture. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because this my brother. And it's like when I'm, when I'm with, now you know my person now like he gets it he loves him 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, cool. Like, he reaches out to him for certain shit. You know what I mean? That he needs. But like, also, right, then with somebody just talking about the understand, the relatable part, just the confidence that come with being in the industry. Because yeah. you got to have a certain level, level of confidence. Sure. It's like, I'm around so many people. I need you to understand this, so we got to be on the same yeah. page. And also, I know, shit, I'm lit too, so you don't want to miss out on this either. It's yeah. kind of like confidence. It's, yeah. That, it's like... It's like a... It's like a weird balance, mm. I think. Um, I don't want to say weird, but I'm saying weird for lack of a better word. It's just an interesting mm. um, balance, I think, because he, you know, with him, he's not like a, he don't want to be seen. He don't want to be hurt. You know what I mean? He like to just work and do him and he cool. You know what I'm saying? And um, now I've evolved into kind of like being the same way. But because I'm really an artist, like I don't really have the luxury of not being seen or heard. Mm. Um, so it's like we just kind of have to, I guess, we're, we still navigate what that is, what that balance is. But I mean, I think for the most part it's cool. You know, um, I That's talk hard. about it a lot on um, on my album for sure. This time around, like I took maybe like a, a year, like all this year, I haven't dropped a full length project. Um, I've never dropped a, a album in my entire career, but this album feels different. It feels more grown up and impersonable, and, and I feel like I'm really talking about like real life experiences, and he's like a part of a lot of that. Wow. Um. So it's just it's interesting. I feel like I'm really able to vent and get stuff out. When is is the, is the album out right now? No, it's is not it, out right now. When is it coming so out? I'm looking gearing towards the top of next year. Um. At first, I was gonna do it this year, but I just I'm like low key a perfectionist, and I don't want to feel rushed. Mm. I don't want to feel like okay like you know i gotta put this out because the fans want it i really want to want to put it out and i want it to be something that i'm super proud of and i don't want to rush it but you know you really have nothing to lose like you said you um you never dropped the album yeah right so like i feel like this is only the start of what can be so great absolutely but i think too you know for me it's like quality mm. you know what i'm saying i want to make sure that when people hear this they like oh shit like she coming with some shit mm. like every song on here is like no skip you know what i mean so it's like i just feel that i have to really be strategic about this you know um about this album i'm so like like sensitive with it like you know my, my bros now just sat with me through some real shit. We are like, law though, right? Who yeah. said it? Er, er, Erica Badu? We are. Who, yeah. who was it? Erica yeah, Badu? Erica Badu, right? Like, we, we artists. We they don't really sat this. with me through some real emotional things. You know what I mean? It helped me like put this, you know, into a record. And I honestly think too, a little bit of it is like almost I've never been this vulnerable mm. with the world before. And uh, like I feel like my fans typically hear me speak from a. Uh, uh, fuck that nigga I don't need him da, 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 all this stuff and this particular time it's not like that you know what I'm saying I don't feel like that mm. you know what I mean like or I didn't feel that way and so you kind of hear me go through the emotions of like feeling like damn but I still like this nigga though mm. you know what I mean I still like that's I, a great I'm space been, to be you know in. what I'm saying so it's kind of like that's really where we are with it um but I think, it, honestly, I think it's an amazing body of work. Mm. I think we did a really, 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 really good job with it. Do you think you're, like, more submissive now that you're growing into your womanhood? Um, more into your womanhood? I think I am, but I feel like if I feel that I'm not being led in the right direction, it's a problem. Mm. So it's almost like I'm submissive for the right person. Yeah. Okay. So, do you think you make better music when you're in that happy space, submissive space, or do you make better music when you like fuck that nigga? Um, I ain't gonna lie, I be feeling like both. I be feeling like my music just really be hard. Oh, your shit just bang. Around. I ain't gonna lie because I have really good ballads. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people's favorite song for me more is a ballad. Mm. You know, it's not really like oh I don't need him. You know what I'm saying? So I think they kind of just. They just like, fuck with you. Yeah, like they they yeah, really I'm just, just fuck like, with it. Yeah, all they <laughs> they just like what I do. You know what I mean? Um and I feel like really no matter what bag I'm in, like even if I'm in a relationship, I'm still able to tap into like that bag cuz a lot of my songs come from like experiences around me, too. 
Like, it might not personally be something that I'm going through, but, like, if my homegirl come and she talks to me about something, I'll be like, all right, cool. And I just be like, tell me what you think about this song. She's like, bitch, how the fuck did you just put all of this in a song? Like, mm. just uh, the same conversation we just had. You know what I mean? So it's like I draw inspiration from other places, not just from my real life experience. How do your friends take that, though, in those moments? Because, like, you know, it can be cool, yeah. but at a, at a point it's like, yo, if I come to you being vulnerable, I'm telling you how I feel, and the next thing you throw, we put in a song. Yeah, the world don't know, but, bit, like, your friends, yeah. girl, probably, bitch, how the fuck yeah. you telling my business? Like, I mean, I think they enjoy it. I think my <laughs> friends actually feel like it's really cool, and I think that because the world don't really know that it's about them, the world thinks that it's, like, me going through that, you know, it doesn't bother them. But I think mm. to them, it's almost like they like, how are you able to do that? Like, so <laughs> question, because it's not your experience. Mm -hmm. Are you giving them, are you giving them writing writers, writers credit? Um, there have been records, though, where I have like given friends of mine like writer credit for sure. But my friends like they they're not feel. they're not musicians. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like they don't. They can still earn a couple yeah, dollars, you feel me? I don't think my friends think that deep into okay. it. Okay. You know, like, okay. I think that they, the, I've been blessed to have a friend group who really just wants me to succeed. Okay. Like, nothing more. So, if I'm able to draw something from an experience they have and put it in a song, like, they just want me to win. Like, mm. it's not even about, like, you know, anything like that. Like, I think they just really really want me to succeed and sometimes i'll take what they'll tell what they're telling me and kind of like mesh it up with something i've been through and you know it's just i don't know like it's just um it's just a different experience no i understand it's a different experience so i wanted to get into something fun okay so you've been in a group yeah y'all went y'all separate ways yeah who do you think had the worst group breakup of all time Oh, um, something that was like really big and kind of like, mm, I don't, mm, I ain't gonna lie, I'll probably say B2K for real. That shit is crazy. I'll probably say B2K. <laughs> I would probably say B2K because it's so many like different stories about what happened with that. And then I think even right now with them being like all grown men, they father, you know what I'm saying? It's still like a sore spot for them, you know? Um, so I definitely kind of feel like B2K, but, you know, I mean, I, I don't know what happened with the situation. So curious, did you look at um, Omarion different after the verses? Um, no, because Omarion could sing. For me, it's like, like a live performance like that, right? Like, we don't heard him sing live and he didn't did a one so to me it's not about if he could sing or if he can't sing i just think that wasn't his best performance okay but outside of the performing though i'm talking about like how he even reacted towards his his ex-group members like did you be like damn like i can't. mean i don't know what happened okay for him to be that way and see i think a lot of times too just with groups it'd be a lot of stuff that goes on that people don't know about and with my group i've always felt that like just the way we are, it's not even nobody's business to mm. know what, you know what I'm saying? Like, unless, like, I just feel like it's no one's business, you know what I mean? But I feel like with with them, something has obviously happened where niggas is like, fuck it, you mm. know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so I don't really know what took place, what happened with him and the group members. It's kind of like, he say he say like yeah, no, well, he said this he said that da, da, da. you know so we we none of us was there and that's too why i really don't try to like just talk about you know just shit like that because i feel like when you telling your truth you opening up a space for people to say you lying and when someone tells you that you're lying and you're telling the truth it triggers you oh yeah for sure you know it makes you upset you like nah like this is this is a fact but if people really feel like it's not a fact they feel like it's not a fact and especially if it's like a public figure you know what I'm saying? It's like people nine times out of ten are gonna go with the public figure because we feel like we know this person. Mm. You know, they would never do nothing like that. You know, like type of thing. So it's just I don't know. Okay. Don't know. So give me top three. Kid slash teenage groups. Top three. Top three. Who started as like young? Okay, well I have to go. Well, I can't say my group, right? So give me top five then. Okay. So I'm going to say my group, of course. Of course. OMG, like, I got to put us in the mix. Oh. But I feel like. Um, OMG girls. Yeah. I feel like 
Three L W was a good one. They was kid. How old were they? They were young, like fifth, like our age. Oh wow! 14, okay, like OMG 15. girls. Three Three L W. Uh huh. I think um, New Edition's a good one. <sighs> First song I ever recorded was Mr. Telephone Man. Ah. Um, <laughs> I was trying to think who else. Oh, gotta say, I gotta say B Two K. For sure. And then, really, can I say Destiny's Child? Because they were teenagers. Yeah, that's not. Can I can I say can I say that? We could do that. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Destiny Child. Okay, now give me top five group all time. Ooh. Okay, TLC got it going. This is in no specific order. Okay. TLC, Outkast. Ooh, heavy. Um, that's some southern shit to say mm -hmm. though. That's some southern Mm -hmm. shit to say. Um. Shit, I'm trying to think who else of all time. All time. Shit, okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna throw in. Not yeah, I'm gonna throw in the Temptations. Oof. Ooh, I'm gonna throw she them knows in, a little something. Yeah, I'm gonna throw them in the mix for sure. Um, the Supremes. Oh, you was you were showing <laughs> off, man. You showing off. You showing off. Um and hmm, last one. Do I have a last one? I don't know. I don't know. It's a lot. It's a lot more out there. That I you know, throw but there. like, I'm trying to just think like groups that I like resonate with. Like okay. Groups that just didn't have like. I don't think I would resonate with you. Got me with the uh, Supremes. That's well, what my see, moms would resonate with. I ain't gonna hold you. You know, when you in like a three girl group, like you have to study, right? Okay. So it's like my my aunt was so big on us knowing like just our history, where we come from, like. Why are you doing this? Who mm. did this before you? How how well did they do it? Or not well did they do it, right? So with the Supremes, it's like, you know, you kind of hear, like, the popular songs, you know, that they have. But when you just look at what they did, like, on the accolade side, like, just chart-wise, music-wise, like, the records they were breaking and shit like that, I mean, you kind of just got to call a spade a spade with that one. You okay, know what so I mean? you got to give me We got to give me last one. You got to give me one more. <sighs> I'm trying to think... Mm. I, I'm gonna have to throw Destiny's Child. Yeah, in I ain't again. mad at that. I was waiting. I was I'm waiting. Gonna I ain't mad at that. I'm gonna have to throw them in there again. I was waiting. Like, I'm not mad I'm gonna at that. have to. They, they just are so far. So, how close does the Migos get to your top five? If you if if it was a top ten, where mm. would they be? Or would they even be in your top ten? Yeah, the Migos. The Migos could be in my top ten, and I feel like they would probably be like a seven or an eight. And here's why. Because I feel like I'm not a rapper, mm-hmm. right? So for me, rap music doesn't really like, you like know, like movie. I'll listen to it, but it's not like I'm going to just be like, ooh, I got to be on all the latest rap shit, right? Okay. But with the Migos, I do feel like what they did for the culture and just especially for Crazy. Atlanta is like undeniable. Crazy. You know, like I remember it. You know, I remember them coming up. I remember them, you know what I'm saying? Like just getting to where they are now. So it's just non-negotiable nah, you know what sure. i'm saying like they definitely for sure. went and did their thing see i'm from baltimore so i think like drew hill would be in my top oh five, yeah maybe. Drew like, Hill's though. Drew hill, oh right. man well then we gotta take it back to then i gotta say jagged edge Oof. then i definitely would go with drew hill at over drag jagged ass for nah, me. them boys can sing though they really can <clears throat> sing i don't i mean I think... but drew hill could sing too and then we gotta look at um who else was it um jodeci Jodeci is a good one. Jodeci was cool for sure. Jodeci was cool for sure. Yeah. If and or if or when we see this, Diddy versus Jermaine Dupri versus mm. who wins? That's hard. That's hard. I know what you're gonna say. Ah, oh, I shouldn't ask you. No, that. No, I mean it's hard though because I feel like both of them are just like see with the versus thing. That's why I can't really get with it because I just feel like. Who's to say who's the judge of anything? Like, they both could just be good. Like, nah, I don't Diddy, do that. No nah, cap, because for real, like, Diddy put on for, like, just the whole, like, up north, you know what I mean, side. And I feel like JD put on for, like, the south. And I feel like when you listen to, even now, when you listen to music from up north and down south, it's two totally different sounds. Mm. Even the rap. Like, right now, like, I, like, drill is going crazy up there. But down here, trap music has consistently been the winning thing forever. But, no. Atlanta... You just got like you said earlier. You got to call a spade a spade. Atlanta just took over since I don't even know when now. Yeah, honestly, like it's that's been a, real. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's I definitely a minute. give the respect to Atlanta. 
and I've definitely had the conversations of why people try to why people from up north try to take uh they yeah. overlook the south so much sure but i don't know i still need an answer who wins mm. i'm gonna just have to go with the home team man. i knew it it's fine and i ain't yeah. mad at that i'm gonna have to go with the home team damn i kind of feel bad i need to put some money on my car i feel like uh, oh oh no we can we... oh oh oh, okay. oh see he even even looking out i didn't even think I didn't even think we was talking for this long. Yeah, this me is great, either. great. Yeah, this is great conversation. <laughs> great, like, shit. great. Like for sure. Like, but now I think um, in that it could be a uh, a media train answer, and it's no winner because yeah, I I'm mean, not gonna lie. Like that's for the culture for sure. But I mean, like, I still picked Jermaine the priest. So I felt like that went too bad. No, no, you did. You picked yeah, somebody. But I'm just saying, bad. even if you be like, it's not, like I ain't mad at if if, if somebody said no one, I, I wouldn't technically be mad at that because yeah. they go crazy. Yeah, both of them. Yeah. Like that's fair. Them. That's fair. Mm -mm -mm. That's fair. I can see you doing some songs with like JD. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Same concept. Yo, how is how is the like the solo artist vibe been for you now? Um, I think it's been really cool. It's definitely been a journey, but um, I enjoy seeing like how far I can go, mm. and I enjoy the tenacity of it. Like, watching come on, myself, tenacity! Yeah, like just watching myself continuously, like just go be inspired it. to do yeah. it. Yeah, it's it, it inspires me, and really, like, I, I love the fact that like I have like my own like team, and you know, like my team is like my family. Mm. You know, like every single person who's a part of what I do is literally like somebody i would consider like a brother or a sister like you know so it's just been really cool to kind of see does the expectation or the litness ever bother you like because i feel like somebody who's a nobody respectfully that's coming out making music and you know just doing anything entrepreneurship they really have no expectations like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna see where it goes yeah. but you had a career you had you've been successful you lit on the gram yeah it's a lot of it could be a lot of expectations around you. Yeah. Is that ever is that ever stressful to you at all? Mm, nah, I, I I don't I don't really think about that. You know what I mean? If 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 I did think about it, it would it would stress me out. Literally, mm. like I legit make music for myself, and um, I don't really worry about like what's not like like a like you know like people always just like oh we got to get a song for the radio. Like I don't make music like that like i like i literally make songs i like and if people feel like they're good they listen and if it's not their cup of tea it's just not their cup of tea but i don't really um pay too much attention to like just what's going on like around me and feeling like i have to aspire to that i just mm. feel like everything is about timing so it's like when it's time for me to really like go up go up like it, it's inevitable it's gonna happen like i can't speed it up or slow it down you know it's just gonna happen when it's supposed to but while I'm waiting on that moment, you know, I just prepare for it. Mm. No, I fuck with. I feel it, man. I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. Yeah. Great spirit, great soul Listen, to talk to. Listen, this was awesome. I love, I love stuff like this. Thank you so I'm much. Where I'm able to really, you know, talk, unpack. You know, <laughs> yeah. You, that's why I just sit back and sometimes. Just let people unwind. Yeah. Just you know, it ain't nothing wrong. When the last time somebody asked you how you been doing, ain't like how how have you been or how are you doing? I mean, you know what? I'm blessed to have people around who really care. That's fine. How I feel. You know? I feel like we'd be so busy that sometimes you, and even if somebody, you'd be like, how you doing? It's not really saying how you doing. It's really like, hi, and don't, you better not answer that question. Like, yeah. a lot of times. Yeah. Like, we'd be so busy immersed in what we got going on. We really forget to ask somebody like, damn, how do you feel today? Yeah. It, it, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's deep. Hmm. It's deep. That's what I could say. It's, when was the last time you asked somebody how they feeling today? I ask somebody how they feel every day. Oh, every so day. sweet. <laughs> I like every that. day. I like that. Well, it was great having have um talking to Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, I no, no it. problem. Anytime. Um, I'm gonna try it again. Right, Beja Rodri yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> Mr. J Hill Podcast, Master Rap One Hundred.